It's getting warmer. Now here's the really springy thing I like to show you. A caterpillar. How do you like that? Now look at this. Oh, it's got little horns on the on top there. And oh, decorated all around with nice patterns. Now isn't that cute? Now, you do know what a caterpillar transforms itself into, right? A butterfly. So this is a caterpillar butterfly pencil case. And here's what you need to make it. A kitchen roll. Or you can use two toilet rolls and tape them together or glue them together. But a kitchen roll is really good. Toilet roll. And it needs to be small enough to fit into the kitchen roll like this. And a uh, piece of pink paper. A small piece of cardboard, glue, some paints, ruler, pencil, cutting knife, a bit of tape, sandpaper, fine, uh, fine grain, and what else? Uh, yeah, brushes, brushes. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> I think that's it. Okay, let's get started. You start with the kitchen roll. Now you need to cut it to the size of your pencil. So if your pencils are this long, you need to make a mark, giving it a little bit of slack. So about that big, that's your pencil case. Then you also need uh, to cut a ring that is about two cm long there. So when you cut, cut, you'll end up with one piece that long, and then a ring that is this long. The last part you don't need. So this is your starting uh, point. Now, you need then to add a lid. One for here, and actually one for here too. So, from the cardboard, you trace this circle, this circle, you cut these out, so you get two of these. And then you glue one on here and one on here. Now that I've <laughs> already done. Now, look at what I've done. I have also uh, fine cut the edges and then sanded it a bit with sandpaper so that this uh, lid is all nice, so the edges are nice and smooth. You do the same thing on this side. Then you need to fit this on to the toilet roll. So it goes on here, mm, nice fit, but it's a little bit slack. We need to uh, tighten it up. And we do that by adding some tape along the edge of the toilet roll and you add as much as you think you'll need to uh, make up for the slack. So I'm gonna try three rounds and see uh, if it fits. That's one, that's two, and three. So I cut it off there. Okay, let's try. Yeah, uh, still a bit slack. I'm gonna add one more round. Oh, nice, look at that. Oh yes, that's very good and solid. Now let's glue this on. I spread it on the inside of this little lid and then I stuff this in. There, now while that is drying, I have cut here a little ring uh, out of the bit that was left over, remember, left over from the, from the main toilet roll. So here's a little ring. I open it and then I fit this inside here. Let's see, um, it overlaps a little bit there, so I need to cut that off, so I make a mark. Then I trim off that, li that little bit. There, now it's a little shorter. Let's see if it fits. Oh yeah, just perfect. Now let's glue it on. 
there. Just position it right along the edge of the toilet roll. Great, now that's our uh, pencil case uh, inner construction or the butterfly if you wish. Okay, this needs to dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna paint this one and this one, this one is the same. <laughs> this is a dry version of this one. <laughs> so I'm now gonna paint these, starting with uh, bright green for the caterpillar, giving it an even coat. Now when that's dry, uh, I'm adding one more layer to make it totally uh, even and you know a thick, rich color, looking like this. Now let's have a look at this one. This one is now finished painted. I've even painted a little white inside. Can you see that? A little white inside and then two coats of green on the outside. Then let's paint this one. We start with green at the base. So it's the base and as well as the little edge. We kind of fill up that, that little gap with paint. I'm painting just a little bit for you to see how I'm doing it. And then I'm gonna continue with the next color. Okay, so green at the base. Then I paint pink all the way down to there and all the way up. And then when that's dry, I use white and I take a little bit of, uh, uh, like make a little white stripe along the edge. So, you end up with looking like this. Now, this one is painted twice. That means that's two layers, two layers, and two layers. Now, that takes a little time because you need to dry in between. So, that's why I did it really fast like this, just to show you. Now, this is what you're after. And onto this one, we're going to make the cut for the mouth. So, we used a ruler measuring 3 cm from the top there and about 1.5 cm. So we make a little, a little line for the mouth, straight as possible, like that. And the measuring 1.5 cm, so that's roughly about here to there. Then we make the cut. Holding it really steady, straight cut. Take it nice and slowly until you are through there. Just getting rid of the pencil marks and then we push in the mouth. It helps to use a small object like a little um, the handle of a brush. Open the mouth like this. There. Now we've got an opening for the mouth. Next we paint a round white face. Just a little bit below the mouth. And roughly about up to here. While this is drying, I'm gonna add the tiny little spots. There, now, this needs to dry for a little while. Now it's all dry and I have put two layers of uh, white onto the face to get the, to um, cover properly. Then we paint in the mouth. Okay, there is the mouth and then the eyes. For the eyes I use purple and a very small brush to get that fine point. Two little dots. Oh, cute! Then we put it over here to dry and then the caterpillar. First, we need to cut the mouth. So the same thing, we measure 3 cm from the top, that's the mouth, and then about 2 cm wide. Right, that's the size of the mouth, and we cut. Okay, now push the mouth open. Nice one. Then let's paint in the eyes. There. Next, the white stripe along the belly, going a bit zigzaggy down like this. There. And some of those white spots around the body. 
couple of small ones. There. Now we can paint in the mouth. There. Now let's dry this for a few minutes. Next we do all the rings. First there are the, the rings around the eyes. Actually this is easier if you put it down like this. Because then you can rest your hand on top of it as well. One purple ring and one pink ring. Let's make it nice, colorful and cheerful. I'm making the pink ring a bit thicker than the purple ring. Just for fun. And pink pupils. Then I continue with the purple rings for the, the legs. These are the tiny little legs coming down the body of the um, caterpillar. And a spot in the middle. Then rings around the, the white spots on the back. Some can be purple, others can be pink. On top of the head we have the, uh, the antennas, the horns or whatever you want to call them. One pink one and a purple one. Now let's uh, put this away to dry. In the meantime, let's do the wings for our butterfly. Now the wings are basically heart shapes such as these. So now we need to make two heart shapes out of this piece of pink paper. So you start with drawing one, roughly about this size. Then you need to check if it's roughly the right size for, yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, refine the shape of this one a bit. And then we cut it out. Of course, here you can use a scissors if that's what you prefer. Then you erase the pencil marks and then you put it next to it, next to this. Trace it so that both your hearts are exactly the same size. Then you cut that out too, so you end up with two equal hearts like this. Now, to put them on, we need to fold the gluing lug and that's about here. So you fold them here and then you test it to see if it's the right size. You see it goes on there on the side and then when you when you close the wing it should cover the eye but not both the eyes. It should just cover one eye so we need to adjust it a bit. Cover one eye, a bit there, cover one eye. Yeah, now it covers one eye. That's perfect. That's where you want to put it. So, mark this uh, spot here, it's roughly about there, put on a bit of glue, not too much, spread it out a bit, and then you put it by the mark, that's the spot. Yeah, cover one eye, that's perfect. Now you may leave it uh, just pink like this, or if you want to, like I have on mine, put on some little hearts there, I advise that you do that before you glue them on. Then you fold it, the same as the other one. Test it, see if the right positioning. There, that's perfect. Testing, yeah. Rub on it a bit to make sure that it sticks. And then, when everything is dry, you may want to add a little bit of lacquer. Now, you don't have to do that, but you know, on mine, I always like to, if you look at this one, this is um, shiny and uh, glossy surface. That's what I like. And it also helps to protect your butterfly against dirt or, you know, uh, or damage. Just like that. Then, of course, get your favorite pencils, put it inside, and then now, you see, now you can play with it. You can play peekaboo. Close the eyes. Pickable, <laughs> and then take your caterpillar when you're finished. This is where you know how you put it, uh, you know, at home or when you're on your desk at school. When you finish for the day, you finish drawing, just pick a bow, close the eyes, and this goes in your uh, school bag or put it wherever you like. It's very solid, it, uh, it lasts for a long time, and it's just the coolest, cutest pencil case ever. 
Oh, peekaboo!
this video, I'll show you how to turn a box into a colourful desk organiser, shaped like a house. And here's some stuff we'll definitely need to make it. We start with cutting along these lines here and here, also across here, up this way, down this way, the same as the other side and across here, like this. As you can imagine, we need to cover the, the roof here so that it doesn't rain on the people inside. I cut this strip that is matching the width of the roof exactly. And that is 11 cm uh, if you want to know. So I load on quite a lot of glue because the cardboard will soak up a lot of the glue. So I'm very generous with the glue here. Take off a few uh, bits of tape to keep them uh, ready. So that when I add this one, I add it so that it sticks out just a little bit down here. I immediately have to tape it on so it doesn't fall off. I push uh, the side of the house out so that it, it's um, flush with the edge. Turn it around, it needs to be flush here as well. I'll put on a bit of tape down here as well to make sure it's bonding properly here. Perfect. Then I fold this part over and down here and I need to be really careful so I fold well. So let me see now. Oh, yeah, here. Mm, yeah, oh. oh, pushing me here. Oh, I'm gonna shape it a bit. Yeah. And then more tape. Now we need to wait for it to dry. I'll be back in a second. Ah, uh, not totally dry, but halfway dry. Enough for me to remove the tape down here and then trim the edges so that it's flush with the side of the, um, of the, um, what is it called? This, uh, oh yeah, it's called a wall. Yeah, uh, right. Now, we are ready to draw the windows. Now the windows we can draw pretty much anywhere we like. This type of window, we can have um, this type of window. Small windows, maybe a really big one. You see, now we have a nice collection of different size and different shape uh, windows. Now we need a door, of course. How about a door down here? The funny thing is, the smaller you make the door, the larger uh, the house will look. <laughs> because that means a person is just about this tall. Let's cut them out. About three cuts to get through the cardboard because the cardboard is quite thick. Oh, beautiful. 
window. Don't forget to um, take off the bits of tape. I will now show you a box that is fully cut all the windows, doors, everything. Here I have even opened the door. Can you see that? Hey, so I haven't cut the whole thing. I, I left uh, one side there so that you can have a door that can open and, and uh, close. School is over us and we need to take it seriously. We need to get organized. A home for your pencils and all the stationery you need to have a perfect school year. Here I have organized all my pencils in this very handy uh, pencil organizer. Those memo pad thingy with color. Uh, markers, containers with different things. I got my grays and blacks over here. In this shelf, I have all kinds of containers. I have paper clips, pencil sharpener, and different things. Then up here is a tailor-made little drawer to fit on top of the house in the attic. It's an attic drawer, in fact. And here I got stuff like highlighters, erasers, and different things in here. To top it off, there is a hey, shh, ah, shh, secret. Don't tell anyone, because if you take this knob, there's a secret room with my secret diary inside. This is my diary, everybody. I've never showed this to anyone in my life. I'm gonna show it to you now. Uh, I bought it in Beijing, in China, and it's got all my secret notes inside. Can you see that? All my secret notes that nobody knows about. These are my ideas. Yes. Okay. Uh, I suppose you'd like, to, uh, like me to show you how to make this fantastic home of the pencils. So uh, let me clear it off and then show you what you'll need. You will need uh, toilet rolls, a bit of uh, cardboard of this type, that's a recycled um, kind of thick uh, uh, solid cardboard, a little bit of glue and maybe a brush to rub the glue, a ruler to measure things, a pencil and a marker to mark things, a cutting knife, maybe even a big one and a small cutting knife that's always handy to hand for various you know uh, things, some filler mask to fill little holes and little cracks and stuff and a spatula to go with it to you know to fill the things, a little bit of tape, elastic band, some strips of cardboard, some bit of extra cardboard for cutting different things, a little box to make the uh, pencil uh, container, some box of some sort you'll find doesn't have to be exactly like this. Then uh, you will need a house. We start by opening up the house. Then we need a ruler to mark how big the opening or the door should be. So I'd say about 1.2 cm should be quite perfect. So we have to mark 1.22 places and then we draw the line there and then up here. And over here. There. And now we need to cut. Start with cutting straight down from this side. And on the other side. There. And then the underside. I have to measure here too. 1.2. Cut. Now, before we open this door, we make sure that we put something in front of where the fold is going to be, like the ruler, something straight, so that we have something to fold against. So you press the ruler and then you press the door out to make sure that the fold uh, is nice and sharp and clean. Yeah. Pushing from the inside, pushing out against the ruler. That way I ensure a nice clean fold. You gotta show the cardboard who is the boss. 
Okay, nice fold there, up and uh, close very nicely. And inside here is some cardboard junk from the windows that I cut out. You see those? Yeah, so those we just get rid of. Now we can continue to uh, put in the floors. We will need uh, these um, uh, strips of cardboard that I showed you earlier. Let's see now which one fits the, the width. I have cut one that is, oh yeah, this one is nice. That'll be nice for um, the floor up here. Uh, the first floor is kind of tall so that we can fit in the tall pencils. We can take some pencils uh, to try. So you can see here the pencils are quite uh, tall. It's all the way up here at 23 cm. I make a mark here. That's the height. Same over here. There. Now we need to see how long it needs to be. Uh, it needs to be this long. If I make a mark here. And then we cut it. There. Let's see how it fits. Very nice. And also a nice height above the pencils. Now one thing that is really handy is to uh, cut a little strip to support the shelf. So I cut a little strip here. If the strip goes here, then it will support the shelf from uh, underneath. So the shelf is here, and then I put the little strip here, then it supports it uh, here so that it it's, uh, rests. The shelf rests on this little strip. So it's a supporter then from this side, this side, and that side. So I need to make a, a mark where this little strip should go. And then I draw a line, and then I put glue on and glue it on. There. Next, I put glue on the sides of the shelf and stick it in making sure it rests, rests nicely on the little cardboard strip. It does help to take a couple of small pieces of uh, tape just to support your shelf uh, until the glue is dry. There. In the meantime, let's focus on the shelf above here. So, you take uh, the cut off piece of cardboard. How high should the shelf be? It's up to you really how you know big you want this shelf and this shelf, but I think maybe about this high should do the trick. So I make a mark here and cut it. Uh, there, and then uh, test it out. Quite nice, maybe trim it a little bit more. Now this is called fine adjusting. So, uh, that's something you always have to do when you work with cardboard. You try, you test, and you adjust. And in it goes. Make sure it's straight. Does it look straight to you? It's a bit hard for me to kind of do this and show you at the same time. Anyhow, uh, yeah, looking pretty straight. Yeah, not bad, not bad. And this shelf is so small, it won't need the support from underneath. So uh, that's why we don't need that strip there. Now, if you hold on to it for a few seconds, it tends to dry as you hold it, or not dry, but the glue will set so that, so that if you slowly remove your fingers, whoa, it stays there. Now, everybody, this needs to dry, so I'm gonna take a little break. Next, we need to make the wall that supports the, the floor uh, uh, across here. So, then you take a piece of cardboard, you measure the height, that's roughly the height, or exactly the height that you need there, and then you cut your piece. Now I have pre-cut the piece here, that is pretty perfect, let's, uh, let's try it on. So I put it in here, oh, beautiful fit, look at that. This then supports this uh, uh, floor even more. Next, we need to uh, check where shall we position it, because after all, this is where the pencil organizer go. And this is the box that we are going to make the pencil organizer from. So we need to stick this box in to make sure that it's space enough for it in there. 
So in other words, we need to adjust this wall according to the size of this box. So uh, let's see, oops, yeah, I'd say about there. Then this box goes in and out very easily. So we make a mark here, up here and here. And then the question is, shall we keep it boring wall like this or shall we shape it a bit more artistically? You see, I have this idea that this wall can be a bit sort of curved. So if we have it here, let's see, what if it sort of goes like this, a curve, and then out again like that. That'll be really beautiful uh, when we put it in. So let's cut that. Maybe round the corners a little bit even. Make it extra nice. Oh yes, yes, yes. Gorgeous. Now we can put on the glue on top here and this side and the bottom and we stick it in. And then we adjust it according to the mark that we made up here. Push it all the way to the back so that the glue grips all the way around. While this dries, we can make the chimney. So I'm cutting a piece of cardboard, roughly the size that I need. Um, yeah, that's a good size. So let me show you how. You take your a ruler and uh, press. You count these stripes, one, two, two and a half in the middle there. Then you press your ruler down. So when you press your ruler, you create a dent like this. And then you go again, two and a half. You press your ruler, yeah. So now you get this sort of shape. Again, same thing. See, now we have a little square at the end there. And that is the size of your chimney. So then you take your pencil, mark it, cut it there. And now we can glue it. Get some tape out, press there uh, let's put on some more tape this now needs to dry luckily I have another one that is already dry so let me show you what happens when we uh, take off the tape okay let's try it out as you can see here it needs to be cut at an angle so that it matches the angle of the, uh, the roof There, let's test that. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, not straight, it's a bit uh, off. It needs to be a bit in like that. So we need to take off more up here. Mm, much better, much better, but still needs a little bit. Okay, oh, perfect, yes. Plenty of glue on this one because the uh, corrugated cardboard absorbs a lot of glue So you need a lot of glue to really make sure it sticks Position it nicely Actually, I think I don't need to put on any tape on this one because it uh, It sticks so well already now this just uh, needs to dry Let's get on with the pencil organizer that goes inside here and that's this box. So let me show you how I make it. Basically, I find a suitable uh, box, a suitable size box, and then I glue all the flaps together. So this is glue here, put glue here, glue it together, put tape, tape, so that uh, it becomes a, a, a tightly sealed box. Then I have cut it in half, half, half all around uh, until I get Two of these, but I only need one. So basically this is what you end up with that you're going to use. When you have this box, we cut it at an angle. You see it's cut at an angle here so that uh, it, it's got a bigger backing here, but a nice display in front. So get your ruler out again and decide roughly the angle, maybe something like this. So that'll be down to here, make a mark across here, so it's this angle, 
And let's uh, use the ruler to make sure it's really straight. And this side. We cut. Notice that I angle my knife when I cut this so that I don't cut straight down. I cut at an follow the angle of the side here. There. Now you can see that it's the same as this one. So inside here is these compartments so that uh, if I take out a few pencils, you can see that there are compartments all along dividing so that you can organize the pencil. So there's compartments this way and this way, or dividers this way and this way. So let's do the ones going this way first. Then we will need these little bits of cardboard. So let's uh, try them out. Now we need to adjust them so they're a little bit too tight. So I snip off a little bit. When you adjust, you take a little bit at a time. So let's try it on. Yeah, a little bit too tight still, so. Oh, beautiful. Then you have the angle this way. So if I hold it against here, I can see the angle. I make a mark like that, and then I make the cut. Beautiful. Then I can glue that in. Now, how big you would like the compartments to be, that's entirely up to you. So I'm just uh, doing it so that it's about uh, two to three pencils wide. Then we try another one. Yeah, too tight. Let's adjust. Good one. I hold it over here. Make the mark again. Basically now we continue to uh, add these dividers all the way up uh, here. Okay, done that. Now we need to do the dividers across. So I take my trusted uh, cardboard piece again and uh, measure how wide do I need to make it. Let me see here now, shall I do it? Maybe I do it this way so the stripes are across. Okay, so this wide, draw a straight line, cut, and test. Yeah, quite perfect. So I need to mark it again, cut, Yes, one with the glue on three sides, one side, two side, and three side. In it goes. And then I carry on like that all uh, across uh, the pencil organizer. Okay, last one there. And now this needs to dry. Okay, I put it over here, and in the meantime, let's have a look at our house again. We are going to make a special shelf for the top floor, and that's going to be fun with this uh, piece of cardboard. So, uh, we now need to fold. I can just make a, a dent here and a fold here. See, we need to fold the side. So, if this goes in the corner up here, how wide is it? Is it? It's, uh, let's see here now. And it's this wide. So we make a fold there as well. Okay. Okay, we need to cut away a little bit on the sides first. So that we can try to fit it in and have a look. Yeah, nice, you see? It fits beautifully in there. Let's now just um, cut uh, these sides to equal uh, length. And for that, we need to use our ruler. Uh, uh, let's do it at 4.3. So there and there. Okay, draw a straight line. Make a cut. And then we need um, the sides. I have here cut a couple of sides. Let's see if they fit on. Almost, almost. 
what we can do, we can glue them on and then uh, adjust them later. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and glue. Glue them on like that. I'm gonna use some tape so that it'll sit properly. And then before we set the angle, let's try it out. So we stick it in here. Yeah, uh, that should be the right angle there. And then I make sure I see where that is so that I can tape it down at exactly that point. Yeah, that's the angle. And the other one. Yeah, that should be the angle. And I will need a bit more tape to sort of keep them together there now i need to um, put something heavy on top maybe this one yay okay let it stay there and dry for a little while uh, and then we put on the uh, the other one now the glue has set uh, let's uh, stick on the other one so uh, a bit of glue on this side as well there stick this on making sure it's uh, flush with the bottom here and then let's uh, wait for it to dry well actually in the meantime let's make the secret door remember the secret door okay so I'm gonna move this one a little bit over here and um, secret door oh that's very easy basically you take a piece of cardboard and you measure the size of this um, opening here so that you get a thing that fits right in so uh, you can put it like this you draw on the side I mean on the back like this you see this uh, that's your angle then you just uh, cut that out oh, like this Try it again, a uh, um, uh, little bit too big, so let's adjust, try again, yeah, I think that's quite good. So now we can um, make a mark uh, up where this shelf goes, make a mark here, and then cut again, test it again, yeah, yeah, I think it's just right. So now, let's make the little knob here. Okay, take a piece of cardboard, you cut two little square or rounded, it's up to you, and little, little bits like this. Make them the same size. Like this. And glue them on top of each other. Like this. Then, you take the secret wall, put more glue, and stick it on roughly about so, now this one needs to dry, so we put it over here in the drying department. Anything else we can make? Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, uh, it's those strips uh, along the top and the bottom of the secret door. Ah, I got some more cardboard here. <laughs> okay, so we need the same length and about this wide. This length and about this wide. Ruler! Like this goes on here and then if you look inside you can see that there is an extra bit of cardboard on there that means that the strip on top doesn't have to be as wide as this one because the wall is thicker up there so the next one we're gonna do which goes on top here can be a, a little bit less wide basically Okay, now, let's glue it on. The wider one goes at the bottom, the less wide one goes on top, and let's stick them down with some tape. Now, dry! Nice, yeah. Let's have a look. So, we take off the tape. Now the time has come to trim the edges so that the thing is nice and uh, lean and, and will fit into the shelf. Okay, so we start with trimming the edges clean like that and basically all the sides. 
Okay, let's test it. Yeah, ho ho ho! A perfect fit! Now, uh, we want to sort of round it off so it looks nice and also easy to kind of grip it inside like that. So we draw a little rounded shape like this and then cut it. For that I'm using a smaller or my smaller knife because it's easier to cut smaller shapes with. There. Now the time has come to put on the elastic bands. You see, for the markers to um, stick well to this, uh, this uh, wall here, uh, we need an elastic band across and um, so it goes from about here to here. We can start by um, cutting off a piece. Yeah, that's pretty good. Then put lots and lots of glue uh, at the end of uh, one side. Uh, the reason is that this material is very absorbent. So you need quite a lot of glue to kind of make sure that uh, basically it's enough glue. So you stick it on there and stick on a piece of tape until it dries. So you can control it. So straight like that and then it goes across to about here and then we let that dry for a little uh, second and then we do the other one remember the uh, secret uh, the place for the secret um, uh, diary cut off a piece about this long glue on one side put on a bit of tape and then we let it uh, dry for a little while. I'm gonna take the opportunity to take the tape off and then double check that it really fits. It fits but it's a little tight, it's just a tiny bit tight. So um, this is the time to uh, trim off a little bit. Try one more time. Much better, much better. Okay, then when the glue here has set a little bit, we can do the other side. So, uh, looks like it's a bit too long. I'm gonna snip it off first and then glue. And a piece of tape to hold it down while it uh, dries. Now, what you need to do is to stretch it a little bit, but not too much, just like that. Same with this one. Have a piece of tape ready, that's always good. Glue, stretch it a little bit, not too much. And on with the tape. That's just right. And then I'm gonna show you a new little trick and that is to um, use the filler mass and the spatula to uh, fix up some of the rough edges. You see, when you're working with cardboard, you very easily get edges uh, that are a bit rough, such as this. If you want to smoothen it out and make a nicer looking finish, you uh, add this. So you put that in here, put that in here. Not something you have to do, you know, the house can manage without it, but uh, like I said, you know, it depends how nice you want your finish to look. I'm not gonna put filler mass on all the edges. I could have done it here and here and everywhere. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put, uh, do the edges that I really think uh, needs to be polished up a bit. On this side and on this side. The last thing I'm gonna show you is how to add a hook or a lock to for the door. So that, you know, you can lock the door and your pencils are totally safe. For that, you're gonna need a uh, stiff piece of cardboard uh, like this that are uh, solid and not uh, corrugated uh, like this. It's a very simple construction. If I can find a pencil in this mess now, okay. Uh, it's a thing like this that you're gonna glue on and then you make a round sort of um, locking mechanism with a hole in the middle, like this. Then you cut that out until you have a piece like this. 
Now, when you cut out the thing in the middle, you will also end up with a piece looking like this that fits exactly into here. Now, this is the locking mechanism. If you glue that to the side here, and then you glue your piece to this side, it locks together. So, the only thing is that if you see, if, if I push here now, you see that this one is sticking out a little bit. Now, it needs to be more in like this. That's why we need to put something, a little uh, a chip inside there. See, here I got a little chip. So, I now need to cut uh, and adjust this little chip. So, this long, there. See, I need to glue this onto here so that when I stick it on the door, it brings this one out a bit. But as you can see now, I need to angle it a bit in so that it comes in like this. That's why I need to put another little chip at the end here. I have a thinner, a bit thinner cardboard. I'm cutting a small strip out of this one like this and I'm gluing it to the end here like that. You see now, when I add it to the door, it changes the angle a bit, so that it angles a bit more in, like this, you see? So when I lock the door, it will grip around the button that is inside there. So this one is now good, I can stick this on. Have a bit of tape ready, and on it goes. Make sure it's positioned right. Yeah, that looks good. You see, this is part of adjusting. Always adjust. That's what you need to do the whole time to fine tune those little details so that they'll work. So this now needs to dry. Next, we need to add this little button to here. So uh, we need to sand it a bit first to make sure that um, it'll fit inside that little, little hole there. Let's give it a try. Still a little bit tight. So I'll sand a bit more and then we need to mark where to glue the button. See if we press like this, now the door is closed. I can make a little circle there. So that's where we're gonna put our button, a bit of glue and on it goes. Then we need to check if it's the right positioning. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now while this dries, we need to make the, uh, the containers. It holds the pencils and the markers. Remember these? Cut them into the, um, the sizes that you want. And you also want to have a uh, slanted um, cut. Okay, yeah, getting closer. Like this. And if you want to cut uh, a uh, smaller one, you can go like this. Like this. Then we uh, stick them on oh, a yeah. piece of cardboard, draw around them, and cut them out. Like this. Okay, let's stick one on and see. Beautiful. And when this is dry, you can trim the edges and make it really nice and um, even, like I've done here. So that's how simple it is to make our uh, pencil holders. So now we have our whole construction uh, of our pencil house.
show you something really, really great fun. It's a fun bookmark. Look at that. I mean, let's say you have been reading this book and I can highly recommend it. It's a really good book. So up here shows where uh, your page is. So your page is there. That's your page. Just follow the nose. Okay, let me show you what the bookmark looks like. Look, it's a book boy. It's an egg boy, actually. It's an egg boy with large underwear, and he's a bit bold, uh, like myself. Um, this is what you need to make him a piece of paper, preferably a bit thick. Then it lasts longer and a bit stronger. Okay, uh, you're gonna need color pencils and a pencil. Marker. Uh, cutting knife. Anything else? No. Let's get started. We start with uh, drawing a big set of egg on the piece of paper. So roughly about this. You can choose how big you want your egg boy to be, of course. Uh, now let me show you how to draw him. We start with the eyes on top and a huge nose and that is the most important of this whole uh, bookmark is the nose because that is where what show you know the, that is what shows where the page is so that's very important uh, otherwise you can pretty much choose how uh, this uh, this uh, book boy is going to look just add the big nose now, um, when it comes to the legs and um, you know arms and arms and legs and feet and hands and stuff, uh, I put them very close to the um, close to the body so that they don't stick out too much and 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 break off. So they're much more solid and will last longer if they're close to the body. Same with the ears. Keep them a bit sort of close to the body like that. Uh, and the underwear, of course, straight across here. Okay, we are ready to ink it in. So, inking the eyes first. The nose, very large and long. Crazy eyes, rings on the eyes, nostrils. It's important to make this bit look really crazy, you see, because then it's more fun. Eyebrows, bald head, big ears, one arm close to the body, one leg close to the body, small bum, and up again. And we're almost done. Okay, we got the crazy little smile with the bunny teeth. Open it up a little bit. Yeah, open it up a little bit like that. Oops, I drew them together, but never mind. You can do them apart like that, or uh, it's up to you one line across uh, in fact two lines across that's the uh, good old uh, underwear uh, opening for the legs down here and the uh, little, uh, little uh, zipper down there okay let's color him up first a bit of base color with sort of uh, skin color uh, i choose skin color very similar to my own uh, in fact this is a self-portrait you choose your own skin color you know he can have any type of skin hot color obviously notice how i put the uh, color pencil almost flat you know flat onto the surface because then i can color much faster and more even so i'm just gonna do this really fast and crazy so that i can get home to my mom for dinner and i'm gonna switch to a red color for the nose big red nose yeah that's really funny that is that's hilarious spend any amount of time on the coloring if you wish just make it look a nice bit of rosy cheeks a little bit of blue under the eyes that's a always fun and it also brings out the white in the eyes a bit better okay now when you cut him out you start with the nose you go a little bit outside the black line of the nose sort of right on the edge of the, the line on the outside just about up to about there not all the way up to the eyes you stop about there same on the other side Accurate, accurate, accurate. Yeah, just same level, same level across there. And then 
cut out the whole thing, of course. Because you see now, it pops out like that. And then we cut out the rest. Notice that I don't cut exactly to the line uh, around the, 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 the boy because I don't need to. You know, it's okay to leave a bit of a bit of white space around the line uh, when I do the outline cut. There. Pop him out. Hey, your bookmark is ready. Let's try it in the book. Uh, let me see, find a nice page for you. Oh, that's a nice page here with some little uh, map there. Okay, so before you close the book, you let your nose point to where you are. You are down here, <laughs> like this. You close up the book and Bob's your firkin. And by the way, I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's a very, very good book, available in all fine stores. <laughs> Everybody, have you got your boxes and your pencils ready? I got this one, and it will be a cow. <coughs> no, that's a sheep. We're making a cow. Woof, woof. Uh, first, let's make a work drawing. I close up the box and glue down the flaps before we start. Now we can draw. What do you need to turn a box into a cow? Well, a pair of eyes, a nose, a mouth, four legs, others, ears, horns, and cow spots. Hooray, a cow! First, we move the drawing onto the box one side at a time. Let's start with the eyes. Then a big round nose which continues around the side of the box. Below that comes the mouth with teeth and a bottom lip. Inside the nose, draw two nostrils. On each side of the face come the ears. And on top, the horns. The first leg is at the side and bottom of the box. Start drawing on the front and carry it on around the side. Above that, draw an arm. And another arm on the opposite side. The second leg points up a little and underneath is a lovely big round udder. Finally the tail, which is on the back of the box. Now get your biggest marker pen and go over all the lines with strong bold lines. It's smart to use a pencil first because then you can plan your cow your own way. And when you're happy with the result, go over the pencil lines with the marker pen. This is how the drawing should look when done. Paint it up. I start with white because it looks so nice and bright against the brown. Check out the lovely contrast we get between the white paint and the brown box. And you know what? That's the most important thing about coloring. Getting good contrast. I'll now mix a warm orange, which goes well with the brown color of the box. Paint it on the nose. And then the others.
and the bottom lip. Switch to black and paint the hooves. Nostrils and pupils. Carry on with some dark brown spots. Paint them all over the cow. Wherever you want, as long as you think it looks good. I'll swap this cow for another cow that is dry and fully painted. Oh, she's gorgeous! Some of the marker pen lines have been painted over, so I'll just refresh them again. Look how pretty she is now! Now we are ready to... Cut! Now we need to cut and open the box. I'll ask a grown-up to help you with this. So, cut around the ears, the nose, the arms and legs on one side, then on the other side. Finally, cut out and fold the horns. I love to fold out parts after I've cut them. It really makes the figures come to life. First, fold out the horns. Then the ears, the nose, the arm and leg on one side, and then the other side. to the back side. Oh, she's almost like a proper cow. Glue on some small bits of card to support the horns and the ears. The other bits should be okay without. See it one more time. First, draw the cow on the box one side at a time. Pencil first, then mark a pen. Next, paint the cow with white, orange, black, and brown. And refresh some lines. Finally, cut out and Fold out the pieces. Stick the tail on and add support for the horns and the ears. And 
She's done! You can also turn your cow into a bookshelf. Strengthen one side with a piece of cardboard. Cut off the other side so you can put in some shelves. Use cardboard to strengthen the walls and the middle to make the shelves more sturdy. Hey, Box, I need some more ideas. Uh, can you help me? Sure! You can use the same methods to make other things, such as this spice rack from an old pizza box. Or this sock snake from a bunch of cartons. Check the cow. Now check the shelf. Uncle Bob on top with a paintbrush. <laughs> there are thousands of ways you can box yourself. Just use your imagination. Oh yeah. Check that out. 